Hey cats, it's your midsole man, Ed Budd here. Today I've got for you my initial review of the Zoom X Vaporfly Next% 3 from Nike. Is it a yay or a nay? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel people, or if it's your first time here, where have you been? Help us out to continue to grow the channel by hitting that subscribe button and hitting the bell of notifications. It also helps if you give this video a thumbs up like and share the video with your running buddies. Danke schön. So it's finally here in hand and I've got it on foot too. Should you shell out for this new super shoe from Nike? My pair cost me £235 here in the UK. I've got a UK 11 or US 12. It's weighing in at about 230 grams, which is 8.1 ounces if you like that sort of thing. Just for reference, my Vaporfly Next% 2 weigh a little bit more than that because they're a half size up. They were about 242 grams, so 8.5 ounces. Just for context, my pair of the Metaspeed Sky Plus from Asics are 236 grams, which is about 8.2 ounces, so there's not an awful lot in it really. If you can tell the difference and perceive the difference on foot, then you've got very sensitive feet. So measuring the midsole stack in the heel from inside the shoe using my special apparatus, I'm getting about 42 millimeters in the heel and about 34 in the forefoot. So you've got about an 8 mil drop. Does feel a little bit different to the previous version of the Vaporfly Next Percent. Just out of interest, I actually measured my Vaporfly Next Percent 2. They've got about like 125 miles on them or something. I've got about 39 millimeters of heel stack there. It's probably compressed down a bit over the miles and about 32 in the forefoot. So it's very slightly different, couple of millimeters in it and that's probably from me just pounding it into the pavement again this is a shoe that i forked out for i haven't got any endorsement deals with any shoe retail sites or anything bought it with my hard earned earth credits i did test out the softness of the midsole here using my shore a gerometer there's only about one or two marks in it between the original version of the vaporfly next percent the next percent two it's pretty much exactly the same i put any differences down to perhaps compression and the fact that these are just brand spanking new out the box People are bound to ask me as well about the widest parts of the shoe in terms of the midsole base. It measures exactly the same as per the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2. So I've got about 11.6 centimetres in the widest section here. And back in the heel, I think it's about 8 centimetres. We'll kick the review off with the upper first. I've got to be honest, this is one of the best looking running shoes I've seen in a long time. I really love that oversized swoosh there that continues onto the midsole. It is fantastic. The upper is extremely breathable, people. It's been cold here in the southwest of the UK, certainly by our standards anyway. My first run out in these was a seven mile effort. I did five one kilometer reps at my 5k pace. Very wet and windy conditions. They got absolutely saturated. Didn't take on all that much water or dampness. I mean, only by wearing no shoes can you effectively get it more breathable i did weigh them after that run it was like a few grams extra but this material doesn't seem to hold on to that moisture which is a good thing especially in this country now some people i noted have said that the toe box seems wider here i don't think that is the case the shoe runs pretty much true to size for me i wouldn't suggest going down a half size or anything like that to try and make the toe box area sort of better fitting it's all to do with the height of the toe box really and the materials that they've used it's just very sort of stretchy here there's a lot of height here so if you've got quite a narrow foot or something you may run into some issues now that might be absolutely fantastic if you've got very chunky toes then you're in luck the upper is naturally quite loose in this front end section of the shoe i did find on my initial run that the upper does flex quite a bit i had to stop and retighten a couple of times that is something i can remember happening in the original vaporfly four percent fly knit this does feel a little bit closer to that shoe although i don't think the knit's anywhere near as dense I'm having to use a slightly thicker sock to make up for that issue. I had to do the same though in the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, so no big deal there. One issue I did have though when taking a very tight left turn, I could feel the tongue actually slipping and it 
completely slipped actually to one side and I was left with some nasty pain on the top of my foot from the laces just around here really where that padding is split. Heaven knows why they've done that, maybe to try and lower the weight of the shoe, but it's a bit of a problem really, certainly while I was going at 5K pace, trying to go around a bend and yeah, it was just like a cheese cutter on top of my foot. So if you like that sort of thing, then go and grab yourself a pair. Now the laces are just about long enough to do a runner's knot here. You're gonna need the dexterity of a seasoned seamstress though to tie them. Why? in 2023 that we have twines that are too short to you know properly lace up with a runner's knot lots of people use that as well come on nike why should lace length be an issue here with a premium shoe that's 235 quid it's just poor in terms of quality of the upper i've got numerous sort of bits of stitching and glue marks and things like that i have tried to clean some of them up clean some of them off as well but Again, it's just a bit poor. I don't see that on premium race shoes from Puma, Asics, Saucony, Adidas. Just, once again, mass-produced stuff that's a bit shoddy. I know that the recent launch of that reimagined Air Jordan 3 has got similar things. Different sort of patterns, different lengths of certain materials it's just a bit shoddy really the rear ankle padding works really well i have to say i got a good lockdown in the shoe that wasn't really a problem i'm just a little bit worried there about these sort of coarse laces i suppose and if i got that problem during a marathon i'd be pretty upset so far from perfect really i think the upper's a little strange not everyone's going to get on with it in some way the upper reminds me actually of that streak fly that they released last year it's just a little bit too generous in size for my liking that said once i'd got the lockdown sorted out it does work with a specific sock i've got to mark it down though for that poor lace length the tongue padding positioning as well just puzzled how nike can mess that up it felt comfortable enough at marathon pace on my second run i was about eight miles about seven minutes 30 per mile so after my initial runs i'm going to give this a 2.6 out of three for the upper midsole 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 now now this isn't the zoom x that you get in the invincible run i'm absolutely sure of it does the shoe feel a little firmer than before a bit more responsive perhaps i don't think it's the stuff that we've seen in the vaporfly four percent does feel a little bit different maybe it isn't the phone though maybe nike are just playing a trick on us when you actually place the shoe down on a level surface you can see it's always got like a negative drop i suppose it does feel like there's a little bit more midsole material now under the sort of front part of your foot it almost seems like this shoe is like a response to the asics metaspeed sky plus loads of people are picking that shoe up and using it for their marathons nike almost using the rear section of the vaporfly next percent three as like an unwanted section it's now like super narrow just a bit of an afterthought really they're just putting it all into that sort of front portion here. A lot of people are talking about the cutout section of the midsole on the lateral side. I've got to be honest, I haven't really thought about it at all over the initial miles. Seems as if they've almost nullified having that cutout there with this sort of piece here that creeps up and around the foot to supply a little bit of support. So I've just sort of moved the foam out of there and placed it up there. So robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, I felt okay at 5k pace, though it, this would not be my shoe for that. Don't think it felt as good to me as the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 did at 5k pace. That shoe just feels a little bit more nuanced. Maybe I'm just more experienced with that shoe. It just feels a little bit more familiar. I think I enjoyed the midsole a little bit more on my second run, which is eight miles at seven minutes 30 per mile. I was basically doing a mile at marathon pace and then three minutes of recovery in between and just doing that over and over and it felt great at that pace so i think this is probably one for me that fits into that half marathon or marathon category more than anything whereas some of the other super shoes that i've tested out over the last few years have felt good pretty much for anything i think i'd probably still stick with the metaspeed sky plus or the takumi sen for 5 and 10k is it me or does the extra stack not seem quite as forgiving perhaps as the versions that came before this the puma deviate nitro elite 2 certainly feels a more soft shoe compared to this makes you wonder what nike is sort of doing with this model really where you've got the alpha fly and it looks like there's an alpha fly 3 dropping this year with a much more wide surface area to it that kind of feels like the 
people's marathon shoe where this one perhaps is now being aimed at those who are sort of performing at maybe faster paces during that marathon distance you've got the every runner's marathon dream the big estate car the alpha fly next percent two you know that beast actually weighs quite a bit more than this one now maybe the shoe will soften up a little bit over time it did feel a lot better on my second run i have to say so i'm going to give it a 2.7 out of three for the midsole after my initial runs i just don't feel it's perhaps quite as versatile a super shoe or race shoe as some of the others that are out there right now it's more tuned in for the half and full marathon to me outsole now and it's been a bit of a baptism of fire for this one i have to say it worked superbly well in wet conditions on my first and second run grips the road incredibly well i mean it is a road running shoe after all i can't see anybody using this on the trails if you do this section here is going to like pick up loads and loads of debris i'm telling you now i have noticed though already that some of the sections here around the midfoot are starting to show a little bit of wear and abrasion the rubber here is quite a bit thinner as well you've got a much more meager application i am liking the fact though that nike have extended the rubber back here in the lateral side of the heel finally thank you how many versions does it take? Do be careful though if you're running on road and there's only small little mud patches, perhaps if you're doing like a local more rural 10k or something, if you hit any mud patches like that, it's got no traction whatsoever, you'll just slide. Now there is still a fair old helping of exposed midsole here in the Vaporfly Next% 3 and where it's got wet it's already showing that sort of elephant skin type effect. ZoomX just doesn't like getting wet and it just starts to crinkle up a bit. It looks a bit odd and unsightly. Not that you ever see the bottom of your shoes. You know, maybe people that are behind you might see that. So just, just be aware. Show a bit of empathy for them. Do I think the outsole is an improvement over the V2? Yes, I do. Big time. That sort of foamy rubber, it was pretty useless really. It got stuff caught in it all the time and it didn't really feel like it had that great attraction. I'm much preferring the stretched out web of waffles here. You have to remember as well that this is a shoe where they're weight relieving everything, you know, trimming off bits here and there. As such, I don't think we should really expect super durability. It's a race shoe if you get a couple hundred miles out of it and you're probably doing well. I've already had a couple of stones get wedged into the midsole here. Bit upsetting, but yeah, it's par for the course. It's a running shoe, isn't it? You've got to use it and enjoy it. What's the point of having it in some plastic box? box behind you when you're making a video just i just don't get it i'm sorry people say oh you've taken it out in the wet and the mud and everything it's like it's a shoe you know you got, it's a running shoe it's not like some casual thing you're going to wear down the pub with your mates or something so you know just get over it so quite enjoying this aspect of the shoe i'm going to give it a 2.7 out of 3 after my initial runs for the outsole we got to talk value now you can't get away from the fact that 235 pounds is a heavy price to pay for such a light shoe i don't think it's worth upgrading right now if you've got a load of pairs of the version one or two perhaps use those up first the arch situation is still there so if that's a problem in the previous version it's just the same here it's very much a remix I'm not so sure that everybody will like the upper changes here. That's the key thing about this shoe. Might work great for some of you if you've got perhaps a more voluminous front part of your foot. But I feel that Nike are sort of slowly changing this model. So it is for you know faster paced running. Whereas the Alpha Fly maybe could be used for a wider range of paces. But I don't think right now I can recommend this as like a must have do feel in terms of enjoyment from the shoe well i've really enjoyed running in it for 15 miles so far but the puma deviate nitro elite 2 and the Socony endorphin pro 3 are available at a much lower price they feel just as engaging really and they're pretty much the same sort of level of weight and perhaps feature by far better uppers which are easier to get a good lockdown in if you want a weight relieved shoe that is going to match this one the asics meta speed sky plus is worth checking out too that's got a more similar feel to this now where you've got that concentration of foam under the mid to forefoot i think the upper on that shoe is streaks ahead of this one as well it just feels a little bit more refined and more nuanced 
It's more subtle. So a 2.6 out of three for value after my initial runs. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us a 10.6 out of 12 for the Nike ZoomX Vaporfly Next% 3. I managed to do it first time. Did you pick the shoe up? Are you thinking about perhaps picking it up when there are some more colorways released? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Quick musical interlude for you. Nothing says 1990s to me more than Norman Cook, or perhaps better known as Fatboy Slim. Whenever I hear the guitar intro to Brimful of Asher, that Norman Cook remix, I mean, that is just one of the things that triggers good emotions in me, I start smiling, I want to dance. It just lifts your spirit somehow. I'm not entirely sure how a song is able to do that just within a few seconds, but it does. A wonderful mishmash of strange, modulated synth sounds and break beats, even hand claps as well. What a fantastic track, you know, and it was a sort of worldwide smash as well, rightly so. It's just a great big cauldron of noise and I love it. Go and check it out, Brimful of Asher, the Norman Cook remix, of course, by Corner Shop. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit that subscribe button, click the bell below for notifications. Also, give us a super thanks as well. It really does help to keep the channel flowing. Make sure you hit that like button and share the video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.